everybody this is Sandra Louise and this is life after the comma it really does get better y'all hey I just really wanted to get on here I'm not gonna be before you long um, just um, wanted to give you all a heads up on what's going to be happening on the, the next week um, I have been led to take a little sabbatical for about seven days and in that time I will be seeking God on where to go from here um, you know without being before you real long um, there's just some things that I said that in the beginning of this uh, journey that I was going to be sharing with you guys the good the bad the highs the lows you know whatever it is it is you know and right now i really have been seeking god about some things that i have some questions about um i know that we have to have a heightened sense of discernment you know, the Bible tells us, especially in um, Matthew 24, you know, he talks about the deception that was going to be in effect and how, and, and I really encourage you to go and read it for yourself. Uh, Matthew 24 in particular, Jesus is speaking and he's warning um, the church about the things that were to come and he talks about you know the rise of false prophets and he talks about the abomination of desolation which basically the abomination that leads to desolation and what those things would look like and what it would be and um, I'm going to actually put a link in uh, in the description of this video so that you can really go and read it for yourself because I need I had to go and read it for myself um, you know what exactly is the abomination of desolation that the prophet Daniel spoke about and um, you know in a nutshell is talking about idolatry and that's where it becomes personal because Although he's he's speaking of it in a specific time, when you really understand what idolatry is, it really is a personal thing. And that we can make idols out of anything or anyone. And so we really have to get an understanding of what that is for us. And... You know, because if we look at it any other way, we'll miss it. And we are in a time where if we are not discerning, if we're not walking, if we're not being led by the Spirit, if we are not, uh, you know, as the Word talks about, you know, for as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And if we are to be the people that the creation is groaning for from for us to manifest we have to know these things we cannot be ignorant of the of the things that are happening right now and we have to make it personal we have to make it personal to ourselves we cannot depend on it coming from any place else we have to make the word of god personal but i'm going to put that link below but if nothing else, read Matthew 24 for yourself. And when you read it, read it with the knowledge of asking the Holy, asking Holy Spirit to bring to light the meaning, you know, to give you, um, you know, a clear understanding 
of what he is saying. You know, this is the beauty of being born again is because you get to sit down and read the word with the author right there with you. <laughs> oh man. Um and that's a another message, but this one thing I do want to say in talking about the word of God, if at all possible, get a physical copy of get a physical Bible. This is where this is so important. And I'm going to drop this tidbit really quick. The reason I say we need to have a physical Bible, I have experienced this and I sent my sister, her a screenshot of a app, a Bible app that I use quite frequently. But I have experienced this on several occasions now where I would be, I would go to a verse, you know, go to look for a particular verse in the Bible and it wasn't there. It would bring up the book, but either the chapter would be missing or the verse would be missing. And in this particular case, I had uh, the, the, the particular case that I went to show her, I was looking for Psalm 119 and it only went up to Psalm chapter 50. <laughs> and this had happened when I was telling her about it, it had happened a couple of days ago. And every time I went to go to Psalm, trying to pull up Psalm 119 on this Bible app, that day it kept on only going up to Psalm 50. And I tried, you know, maybe it was a different translation, even though I knew that this, it should have been there. It wasn't, it wasn't coming up. And so this is, like I said, I'm telling her about it a couple of days later. And I said, now nah, I'll probably go back now and it'll be there. Well, I went back then and it still wasn't there. And this was like two days later and it was still only going up to Psalm 50. And so a, f a couple of times into the conversation, and I did take a screenshot of it and I sent it to her, but then uh, it eventually came back up. But why am I telling you this? Because as much as we live in a technology age, and even now you guys are being able to see this because of technology and technology is good, but it still does not be having the written word and while we still have access to it and if we are in the united states i'm telling you we are blessed because we at this point we can still have a physical bible we can still meet uh, publicly we can still you know come together as believers Whereas some of our brothers and sisters in other nations and other uh, places, they can't, you know, to have a, a physical Bible are literally being killed. That they cannot meet publicly because if it's found out that they're meeting, they are being killed. Our brothers and sisters in the Christ are literally being killed because of the word. And we don't even get it here. You know, we still have the option to come together. We still have the option, but some of our brothers and sisters in other places don't. And so for that reason, I'm saying, you know, come on, you all. We got, we have to, uh, uh, come on, we got to do it. We got to do it. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm saying these things. I'm, I didn't intend to go there, but. Um, but to say, right now, there is a burden on me to get, make sure that I am in alignment with Holy Spirit. 
and what God requires of Sandra. Beyond anything else, I cannot benefit or be a blessing to anybody else until I have a clear understanding of some things myself. And right now, I'm in a season where I am seeing things happening in my life that lets me know that God is clearly with me. And because I know that there is so much more that God has for me to do that there are people looking to me. I don't care if it was one person. I take that one person seriously. I don't just, I don't, I don't do anything that I do for the approval of men anymore. There was a time in my life that meant a lot to me, what other people thought. But right now, that is not, that's not my motivation. That is not the reason why I do the things that I do. I am in pursuit of being who God chose to show up as when he chose to show up as Sandra Louise. That is my goal. That is who I intend to be. My prayer is that whoever, whatever God wants you to do and whoever he created you to be, that you be that and you be it to the full. Don't settle for being a cheap copy when you can be an awesome original. Do you. Be yourself. Be who God created you to be. Because everybody else is taken. So don't try to be something that you're not. Don't try to be someone you're not. And know that there is greatness in you. But only if you choose to be who God created you to be. And with the understanding that he chose to show up as you. That you do him a disservice when you dumb down, when you try to be something that you're not. And that when you embrace that it is God who, who chose to show up as you. When you embrace that and understand that, then you th dismantle the arguments and the accusations of anything else that tries to come against him. That's when you realize that the battle really isn't about you. It's about him. <laughs> and that we don't have to fight this battle. That the weapons of our warfare really are not carnal. <laughs> when you understand that. When you understand that nothing that comes against you will defeat you, will ever defeat you, that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper, and that every, every tongue that rises against you, <laughs> you're going to refute it. Because this is your heritage. And your righteousness is not of you. It's of him. 
And this is what he says about you. When you understand that, you show up differently. It's with this revelation that I choose to seek him. I choose to seek him because I understand that the mandate on my life cannot be taken lightly. That I got to do some things that I haven't done to have some things that I've never had. That I have to break the cycle of insanity that has been going on in Sandra Louise's life. That I'm not satisfied being mediocre. I'm not satisfied with things in my life not looking like the kingdom. I'm not satisfied with it. I'm not satisfied with the way I've handled some things. I'm not satisfied with the way that I have allowed certain things in my life and accepted those as normal. I'm not satisfied with the way that I haven't shown up in the way that I should have shown up. I'm not satisfied with allowing condemnation to keep me stagnant in certain areas of my life. Oh, I'm telling the truth and shaming the devil today. I'm not satisfied with not calling out some things that I should have called out. Paula White Kane says, we will never conquer what we don't confront and we won't confront what we don't identify. And once something is revealed to us, we then have a responsibility to do something. Once, we, once it has been revealed, the origin of something, we then have to confront it. Now we have to confront in love when it comes to other individuals. But let me tell you something. We need to first start with us. We need to first start with us. Before you deal with anything or anyone, you got to deal with it within yourself. And from that place, you approach others in love. Speak without condemning. Listen without defending. And always leave people with their dignity. If we can do that, we're walking in love. If we can see the light in others as though it's the only thing that we see. If we can do that. Then we are being that light. The light that God called us to be. That Jesus said that we would be. That we are. I don't care where you are in your journey. I don't care where you are right now in this moment. Whatever, whenever you're watching this, I submit to you that you are right where you need to be right now. Because do you not know that I don't care what your situation looks like, 
we have a choice. We have a choice to invite Holy Spirit into that moment. We have the choice. You know, the word says that where the spirit is, there's liberty. There's liberty. There's freedom. I love the fact that we're only a decision away from wherever we desire to be. Because our God, our God doesn't exist in time. <laughs> he only gave us time as a reference point for us. But we are eternal beings. <laughs> And God has a way of folding back, folding eternity back on time so that no matter where we are, whatever belongs to us, whatever is ours, it is ours in that moment. It doesn't matter that you don't see it. It doesn't matter. But when you believe God and you believe his word, there is nothing, nothing that is not already yours. Just believe it. Just believe it and show up. Show up. Don't look at, you know, what you have, what you don't have, and what seems like you can do it and what doesn't seem like you can do it. You know, the beauty of God is that he will give you visions of things that are totally impossible for you to do on your own. But are nothing less than possible with him. That's when you know it's God. When it's bigger than you. And he will require some things of you. That yeah. Even those things. Seem like you know God is no way I can do this. And, and it's hard and, and all of that. Yeah it will be. When you look at it from the mind of you doing it. But when you understand that all things are possible with God. That with him there's nothing impossible. If he tells you to walk away from something. Oh you can do it because he empowers you to do it. If he tells you you got to leave some things behind. Even something that you. It doesn't seem like it's bad. It's okay. It's okay. If he tells you you have to walk away from some relationships. That really. There are some things that God will require of you. That it doesn't mean that the people are bad. It doesn't mean that it's anything wrong with them or, or even you. But it may be that he's telling you to let some things go. That may not be. For the place that he's taking you. Now he wants you to do everything. Decent and in order. But we cannot. Hold anything. Closer to us. Than we do God. This is where that. Personal. Whatever. Idol. We may have in our life. This is where. That really becomes important for us to understand and to know if we are holding any type of idols in our life it could be a person it can be someone else's opinion if anybody else's voice is louder to us than God's voice if anybody else's agenda for our lives is more important than the one that God has for us if anybody else's opinion of us is more prevalent 
then what God says about us, could it be that we've made these idols in our lives? For some, it may be you're holding back what God has told you to do because of a child. One of the biggest idols, one of the biggest idols, when you, when you read these, were child sacrifices. They were sacrificing their children to these other gods. And when we first think of that, we literally think of sacrificing children to these gods. But if it's only relative to literal child sacrifices, will miss it. What child of yours where no matter what you know to be true, the moment this one shows up, you will make all kind of revisions to your plan or to what God has told you to do for the sake of taking care of this one or making sure that they have this or making sure that they have that. You will totally abandon what you were had designated for God to take care of this one. When this one shows up, all they have to do is call you and you are off to it. And it could be, it, it may not even seem like that's the case. But let me ask you this. Are you doing it because you feel guilty about maybe the way that you raised them? Maybe some things that happened when they were a child that maybe you weren't, you feel like you should have been better at. You should have been better at protecting them. You should have been better at the things that were required of you at the time. And now the guilt and the shame of it has you feeling responsible for where they are right now. Could it be that now you're serving them at the altar of guilt and shame and that these have become idols in your life? See, when we look at it like that, it takes on a different meaning, doesn't it? And it may be something different from you, for you, but I want to ask you, the idol lies in your why. Why do you do the things that you do? Could your why be the idol that's standing in the way of you living the best life that God has for you? These are the things that we need to evaluate in our lives. See, a lot of times when we look at those type of things in the word, we gloss right over them because we have these literal images of idols in our lives. That's what we that's what we envision. But that's why I said it has to be a personal thing. You have to read the word and read it asking Holy Spirit to give you a revelation of what you're reading. You know, it, I, I don't know about you, but when I read, especially the words in red, <laughs> which are Jesus words, it, I, I read them a little bit different. Because I know the word of God itself 
is inspired is the inspired word of God. But in particular, when I read the red words, I read them a little different. And I want to get an understanding. And I want to make sure that I'm getting the right, the right meaning. And that's the beauty of it is because the same spirit that spoke it lives in me. And I can ask for clarity. I can ask the spirit of truth to give me truth, to reveal to me truth. So I'm going to really be seeking Holy Spirit over the next seven days intentionally to understand what this season in my life is requiring of me. This is the reason I'm asking that you seek him for yourself. Seek him for yourself. I really believe that we're in a season where we're about to see the manifestation of Holy Spirit as we've never seen it before. Yes, the suddenlies, the avalanches, the acceleration, all of the things that have been prophesied, the, tra the transference of wealth, all of these things are happening now. There is supernatural manifestations happening now. There are things that are happening now. We have got to have an understanding of it, you all. We got to have it. We got to know why. <laughs> I believe that Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back soon. I also believe that there are some things that have to happen first. I believe that we have to have a wisdom. We have to have a knowledge. We have to know why. We've got to seek them like never before because people need them. We need him like we've never. You know the saying, if we ever needed him before, we sure need him now. That's the truth. I'm going to wrap this up. And like I said, I'm going to have it in the description below the links that i'm talking about the passage of scriptures all of that but i really do want you all if you don't have a bible get one get one we need it we need to have physical bibles right now i know probably in this house alone <laughs> it's probably two to three Bibles per person in this house alone. I know, you know, we have got to get back to reading the word to, I mean, where you're highlighting and making notes. And I know in each of my Bibles, I, I got notes and all kinds of stuff, but I got all kinds of, you know, like things, highlights and all kinds of stuff. Cause I've had this one for a while probably a good 20 years I've had this particular one but when I tell you we got to have the word and not just have it but we got to get it in here and that's why I really encourage you to have a physical bible because I don't know a lot of what I do know and I don't claim to know everything I don't claim I mean, it's people that can out quote and, and all of that, me in, a, in any, at any given time. But what I do know 
I know a lot of it I got from physically reading my Bible. And and I still, you know, and lately in particular, especially since uh, I've been seeing that happening in this Bible app, and I won't say what Bible app it is, but I can tell you for that reason alone, we need to have the Word of God in our heart. And the best way to do that is to have a physical Bible. So get yourself a physical Bible. That way you don't... you. You have less chance of the enemy manipulating the word. Yeah. I uh, Like I said, I believe, you know, I know that technology is great and that it can be manipulated, you know, depending on whose hands it, it's in, you know, and we know that the enemy can come in and try to do all kinds of things but we rebuke him in the name of Jesus that these things are not hindered that the word gets out and that greater is the one that's in us than he that's in the world and that we have twice as we have uh, at least uh, two to every one angels (laughs) that are fighting on our behalf no matter what is coming against us. And so I just believe that, you know, when we have the intent to seek God and his, what what he has for us to do things his way to, you know, all of that, I just believe that God will always, he will always manifest in a way he will always show up. You know, according to how we seek after him, he's always going to show up. He said, if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And so with that, I will see you guys in seven days. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And be praying for me. And I will certainly be praying for you. Uh, I just know that God is doing some amazing things and that he... You know, as we just have a posture to seek after him, to want more of him, to hunger and thirst after him. He said, if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we will be filled. You know, he told us this. And that's what I'm intending to do. That's my intention is to hunger and thirst after righteousness that I may be filled in these next seven days. That's my posture. That's my heart posture is to seek after him. And I pray that that's what you do also. Uh, I'm not saying you got to do what I do. No, I'm just saying in your way, however you need to do it, however you are led to do it, you know, to seek what he has for you. And I just believe that he's going to show up. Now, again, if you haven't already done it, like, share, and subscribe to Life After the Comma, because it really does get better, y'all. I am Sandra Louise, and I will see you guys in seven days. Love you.